here uh, in Philadelphia, uh, and we're interviewing Professor Walter Izard uh, in his very beautiful house. Uh, and again, this is part of our Parents of the Field project, where we are uh, interviewing people who were active in peace uh, research and peace studies and conflict resolution in the 1950s and 1960s and 1970s, and we're getting their recollections of how the field started and what it was like in those days to try to set up something which was really very new and very daring. All right, uh, Professor Isaac, may I call you Walter? Yeah. Um, Walter, in the, in the early days of the peace and conflict studies field, or peace science, or whatever we're going to actually call it, People came into the field from all sorts of different backgrounds, intellectual, experiential, etc. Um, what was yours? How did you come into the field? Yeah. Well, I guess my, my impression, my, I got into the field because when I taught at Harvard, uh, the, there was a professor there, I think his name is Bowie. He was... Uh, international lawyer and he was a member of the State Department in Washington mm -hmm. and they set up a study of international problems or international conflict mm -hmm. under him and they set up a center, finance center at Harvard. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing happened at uh, MIT uh, where Max Milliken, who had a lot of fine reputation, the son being the son of the Milliken Nobel War, Board and, mm. uh, also set up a center for international studies, mm. again financed by the Department of State. Mm -hmm. And so I looked upon them as, of course, uh, putting forth the standard national policy with mm. regard to armaments and so on. Mm -hmm. And I thought that they were just pawns of the State Department. Mm. So, being a conscientious objector, I was that during the war, mm. I, I felt, well, sometime I've got to do, <laughs> do something about uh, balancing the uh, analyses that have been going on. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I pretty much committed myself to do something on peace science, peace research. Mm. But knowing that uh, I wouldn't have any clout going in as a young scholar, I recognize that if I'm going to have impact, I'm going to have to develop a uh, field and recognize as a leading scholar or so on. Mm -hmm. And so I went into the field of regional science. Uh. And that, no one had done anything about that in the U.S. The Germans in uh, had done a lot on location theory and regional development, but nothing in the U.S. And so I started off this regional science field, and when it got significant recognition, mm -hmm. I decided to go into peace science uh, full blast, right? Okay. And the exact times was the time of the Cuban crisis. Ah, yeah. Khrushchev and, uh, mm -hmm. and Eisenhower were involved, mm -hmm. right? And that was a, as beginning of this period that you're interested mm -hmm. in. And, and I decided at that time to do something about it. And, and uh, you know, it was, a, a, you know, I think in the year 1963, Khrushchev visited the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, established very warm relations with Eisenhower mm -hmm. and all that. But... Uh, in, uh, and they set up in Moscow the exhibits here in the U.S. and, mm -hmm. and uh, U.S. exhibits in Moscow and everything went along very well and warm then and then suddenly came that U flight business. Oh, the U-2, yes, U2, I remember. U-2, mm. right. And then uh, Khrushchev asked for apology mm. <laughs> and uh, sort of... Uh, punishment for so those who were involved. Mm. And of course, Eisenhower was involved. He agreed on mm -hmm. having that. Right? Yeah. So then everything got awful bad. And then the Cuban crisis came around mm. and all that. Mm. So that's how I got into it. And then <clears throat> I sat down and said, well, let's have a PhD program in peace science. 
and I was able to have uh, have uh, Professor Economist Nobel Prize Klein, Larry Klein, mm -hmm. joined me, mm -hmm. and then another professor, a mathematician, Thomas Sorty, mm -hmm. a brilliant fella, right. joined me, and mm -hmm. we set off the set the program going, and we had the PhD program going there. Mm -hmm. And this was, you weren't at Harvard any longer. You I, was, were, I was at Penn. You were at Penn. I left okay. Harvard and went uh -huh. down to Penn. Yeah. Okay. And the program, it was a PhD program? PhD originally? program. Huh? So yeah. you, you started at the very most senior level then? Yeah, right? well, we had, had plenty of clout behind me. Oh, I had, yeah. <laughs> I had uh, again, the, the uh, fellow from the economics department, mm. the Nobel Prize winner. And Sorty was of mm -hmm. the professor in the Wharton School, okay. fairly distinguished mm -hmm. fellow. Yeah. And we went right ahead, the three of us, and set up the program and went oh. on. Well, that's wonderful. Now, you, you, you mentioned that you had decided that when the program was set up, it was going to be called Peace Science. No, it was called first Peace Research. Peace Research, okay. But then, you know, there were a lot of other Peace, peace Research organizations, like one had developed in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, and, and there had been a conference in London, mm -hmm. and everybody was for a Peace Research Association. Mm -hmm. But you know, to me, there was enough, wasn't enough science in it, not, not, not enough use of the formal mathematical models and mm -hmm. of input-output that the use, was used quite a little bit in, in, in economics. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, well, Let's concentrate in our efforts in bringing science together with all the social sciences, mm -hmm. non-mathematical sciences, yeah. into one integrated place. Okay. And so I s went to peace science and wanted to, to separate myself from those who just talk philosophically and mm -hmm. religiously about peace but don't have any real basic under underlying analysis. Mm -hmm. Um, I think around about the same time, uh, I was in London, and it was a time when they were set, when people in London were setting up things like the Conflict, Res Conflict Research, Research Society, yeah. and there was the beginnings of a of, a, of an undergraduate degree at London That's University. Right. You know, yeah. but the, they tended to talk about conflict analysis and conflict resolution, and here you were talking about peace science, and the others were talking about peace studies. Did the distinction matter? Did it bother anybody at the time? Uh, what what was the? Well, uh, it didn't bother me at mm. all because I felt that th there were very fine uh, scholars involved, mm. and even if they didn't use math, they're very fine scholars. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can't remember the names of the Burton, for example, is a really fine scholar, mm. but he wouldn't go ahead, wouldn't, wouldn't go for putting, getting data, accumulating mm -hmm. big data, sources yeah. of data, and that kind of analysis. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's no question that he was a very fine person. Who were some of the major figures that sort of influenced the way in which you, you, you thought and the way in which you approached the whole new field that you were trying to, um, trying to develop? Well, uh, the work of Kenneth Boulding was had major impact on my thinking. Mm -hmm. He was clearly a leading fi figure, mm -hmm. and he was not only a leading figure in terms of writing economics mm -hmm. and good economics, solid economics, mm -hmm. but he's also a leading figure in the center at Michigan that had been developed, mm -hmm. right? And so that that center became active. I guess it was active by 1963 and continued for maybe another decade or a decade and a half. Mm -hmm. And there you had the uh, the great mathematician Rappaport becoming interested, mm -hmm. the sociologist uh, from Michigan, um, slips my mind, yeah. but he was there, mm -hmm. and a good good solid research group was developing there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And while that was developing then, I took advantage, let's say it would be about 1964 or 65, to setting up conferences mm -hmm. and inviting, paper, pa inviting scholars from that center to produce papers. Mm -hmm. 
for the conferences, and these conferences were held in the University of Chicago, and uh, a lot of leading figures were there. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had, would have to refer to the program mm -hmm. to, to listen, to note them, mm -hmm. but uh, that went very well. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So you um, began this series of conferences, and I, I remember very vividly there was one that I attended in, in London. Yes. Uh, and they were, um, the, the building of them was, I'm trying to remember what you call the society of that. that it's a conflict research society, you know, what I would call it still then peace research. Okay. Mm -hmm. And maybe about five years later it became peace science. All right, okay. When I think David Singer became the president of the peace science society. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah. Um, so, uh, there were some interesting and very diverse figures in, 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 in the field at that yeah. time, uh, and some ideas which were very fruitful in producing some, some new thinking. Um, was there anybody particularly that had a major influence on your own thinking and your own development around that time? You came from regional science. Yeah, of course, Professor Leontief, Vasily Leontief uh -huh. of Economics, yeah. and mm -hmm. he was a Nobel Prize fellow, mm -hmm. and uh, he influenced my use of um, input-output in solving peace mm -hmm. conflict problems. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, Dalton was an influence, but his influence was through his following students, graduate students, mm -hmm. a brilliant bunch of graduate students, and they in turn influenced my thinking. Yeah. But, uh, mm -hmm. uh, he wasn't of the uh, scientific so much as others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then there, was, there were, were some Polish scholars, I wish I could remember their names really? now, oh. who were very much interested, mm -hmm. and I could later on identify them for you mm -hmm. if you would want me to. Yes, that would very be very much in interested mm. in s pushing hard. Mm. Yeah. And then, uh, and, and you know, we set up the <coughs> the first conference or the first 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 organization, the still peace research in Lund, Sweden. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we had done it in Lund is I said, well, I'm now going to gathering, uh, gather a bunch of good regional scientists, geographers, and economists mm -hmm. to work on peace. Mm -hmm. And so we had it at Lund. Now, we had a regional science going on at Lund, but uh, they wouldn't allow us to meet really? in, at the university. Huh. So we, we all went down to, to uh, the name of that city, yeah. Malmo, Malmo, uh -huh. which was a, a port from which ships went to various parts of Europe. Yeah, yeah. So we decided to meet down there yeah. in a hotel, and we had this meeting. There the Polish scholars were at present, uh -huh. and uh -huh. the Yugoslavs were present, mm. I think. Well, what was the objection from the University of Lund? Why, why, why didn't they want you to, to, to have your conference? You know, peace wasn't a good subject at that time. Um, why, why not? Uh, they just were f fearful of negative impact. Uh, even in even in Sweden. Yeah, we had a, a grand geographer who invited us to come mm -hmm. to regional science, but he was hesitant about allowing us to meet. Mm -hmm. Well, and so you had to move down yeah, to now to, to a Malmo. hotel in Malmo. Uh -huh. Goodness, I didn't realize that peace was so unpopular. Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah well, I'm um, so unpopular, but uh, a lot of negative uh, mm -hmm. feelings yeah. about the peace yeah. program. Yeah. And that year, again, I'd say was, was about 1964, 65, mm -hmm. yeah. about that time. Yeah. Uh, and so then, you know, <coughs> Then about that time, I also started annual conferences in London, mm. and then also an annual conference 
in Poland or some other place where we have regional science. Yeah. Every time we had a regional science conference, I had a peace research conference. We uh -huh. had it, some at Krakow as mm -hmm. well as at Warsaw. Uh, and uh, then we went and uh, <clears throat> I used to go to uh, Asia mm -hmm. and of course we had conferences with the peace, uh, the groups, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, which groups. In, in Asia, and then we, when we went to Japan in 64, 65, 66, it keeps on going. We, mm. have, uh, we also had units there in Japan, mm. and so I think things went uh, very well. But you know, I think that the interest in peace started to fall off, mm. maybe around uh, the beginning of the 70s. Mm -hmm. Mm. Why was that? I don't know why. I mm. guess I guess I really never asked why, mm. or I, I was conscious of it. Yeah. And so that the numbers in the peace science group at that time yeah. started to dwindle. Mm -hmm. uh, then the big uh, change took place about let's say ten or ten or. Twelve years ago, mm. when at Binghamton University there was a, a thrust to bring in international studies, mm. and there was a distinguished political scientist who was taught originally at the Center of Conflict Resolution, Bremer, Stu Bremer, oh, okay. who then took over the secretary uh -huh. of the of the Peace Science Association. And he built it up uh, with young peace, uh, young political scientists who were mathematically minded. Mm -hmm. And of course he was encouraging all this because of the development of that Singer was mm -hmm. involved in, you know, with his data, Cal data and yeah. mid data. And so then that has developed strongly and it's going very strong now. Mm -hmm. Right now we have a, a very interesting European group getting started again. Yeah. And, but I, I'm still not very clear as to why peace was so unpopular in the 50s and 60s. I mean, it, it make, you make it sound as though it was a, 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 almost a, a dirty word that people you know, wouldn't use in polite company. Why, why was it so... Uh, uh, I, I it, mean, in, you in know, the, the peace research never had any great... Uh, great uh, value in, in, in the society. Uh, mm. It just, it was recognized as relevant. The Quaker influence mm -hmm. was there and yeah. the other peace uh, kinds of group, uh, you know, the, mm. I can't remember their names, all the organizations, but you know, it was a rather limited group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The field's always been very multidisciplinary, and it's borrowed from sociology, political science, economics. What particularly were some ideas that came out of other other disciplines, other areas of study that affected you and affected your thinking? Osborne grit approach. Did you have you acquainted with that? Yeah. Osborne yeah. and the grit approach. Yeah. Uh, mm. Yes, we've come that across was that. One of that. And, uh, of course, uh, he was a psychologist, psychologist wasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Did they play much of a role in, in, in those days, do you think? In those days, they, they, they did play mm -hmm. a significant role. Mm. They, you know, it was, it was careful reasoning that went into it, much more careful than the kind of studies that were being done just by different groups. Mm. And he, he, he built up a process of, of conflict resolution mm. that had a lot of sense to it and had a lot of appeal. Mm. Yeah. So that was Osborne, Bourne was one. Mm. See, it's hard for me to recall oh, many well. of these. Uh, oh, you, you, you've um, uh, done some, you've jogged my memory in, in yeah. several ways. I'd forgotten about Charles Os Osgood. He was, he was influential. Um, David Singer mentioned... Um, Tom Schelling, of course, Tom who just Schelling. got the Nobel, Nobel Prize. Prize yes. As a kind of an anti-figure, I get the feeling David was always arguing against Schelling. 
Uh, did you come across Schilling's work at all? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. And we ran a seminar at Harvard mm. with him. Mm. It ran, ran for maybe uh, four or five years. Yeah. And, of course, Howard Reifer was also at Harvard uh, at Reifer that time, was, wasn't he? Uh, and he was a mathematician. Mm. So he, he and St Lewis, Duncan Lewis, yeah. I think, okay. yes, really Lewis wrote a great yeah. book mm. uh, on it, but on game theory. But mm. So they, they were bringing in game theory. But of course, before uh, them, there was this British scholar, you know, who first introduced game theory. Uh, a mathematician, I guess, I forget his name. And it, I, I can think of several people who it might have been. Uh, yeah. Ginger Beard, Ma Nicholson, Michael Nicholson. Michael Nicholson, Michael Nicholson played a great role at mm. the, uh, the university. Bradford was mm. it? Yes. Yes. yes, and he brought some mathematics. Mm. And always I would invite him to conferences because mm. he had that mathematical yeah. approach and it was good. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Who else to call comes to mind? Oh, uh, from Britain, uh, Paul Smoker. Paul you know, Smoker Paul? was another one mm. who... Uh, oh, so, yeah. Well, of course, they were always very much, uh, if you talk to them, they would say that they had been very much influenced by Lewis Richardson. Oh, that's the one, Richardson's yeah, model, yeah. yeah. And everybody was influenced by that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, it still goes on today. Uh, and there was a recent... Uh, a uh, very, very advanced statistically methods uh, put out by the group now at uh, the British group, which is the the uh, the chapter of the E Car Group. We mm. run across the E Car Group, mm. and uh, which do, which which states that the Richardson model doesn't really. Uh, work, uh -huh. right? Oh, no, I course, haven't seen that work yeah, at all. Yeah. It's a very recent mm. uh, item that's been published. Yeah. Um, one of the things that has astonished me, and it must have been interesting to you, though, is the way the field has grown over the last you know, 20 years. It's sort of expanded in all directions. It's subdivided. Yeah. Um, we talk about now we talk about sort of peace building now, and we talk yeah. about um, uh, conflict settlement and conflict transformation. It seems to yeah. have taken off and gone in, in all directions. All directions it's very diverse, very it different. Is, yeah. uh, did you have any idea this was likely to happen when you when you first started the field? Did you think it was going to be as as sort of oh, yeah. successful as this? Was this what you wanted? Well, I was always optimistic mm -hmm. about it, and. As I saw what happened with regional science, mm -hmm. you see, right now I th I have no idea how many regional scientists there are throughout the world, but let's say ten thousand, it might be fifteen or mm. so. And uh, there aren't that many peace scientists. Uh, I would say maybe notable one to two thousand, mm -hmm. but it's growing rapidly, yeah. and it has all that that possibility for growth that really regional science. Mm -hmm. Uh, experienced. But you were saying earlier on, I remember, that it is it is a very difficult thing to get started up uh, uh, institutionally at universities. Yeah. Why do you think that it is so difficult to, to uh, uh, develop? Well, you sense? know, I'm a, some peace, many peace researchers are thought of as not real solid researchers. Mm -hmm. You know, they talk about the need for this, they talk about the need for that. The NGO groups are, are not too solid analytically right, mm -hmm. but they're important. Yeah. They're very important. Fields always try to be practical. It's always tried to be an applied field. It's always tried to affect policy making. Do you think we've been at all successful in, in doing that, in being a practical, useful field? I think, you know, you have dis disciplines like economics. Right. Mm -hmm. Economics talks about maximizing or minimizing, maximizing profits, minimizing costs, mm -hmm. optimizing in general, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
And then now economics has uh, pushed very extensively into mathematics and mathematical analysis and game theory. Mm. But you know, if you look at any conflict today, there's no optimization involved. Mm. There's no game theory involved. Uh, there's new approaches that are being developed, like developed by, uh, as a result of the work of Tversky. Have you run across Tversky? Yes, I have. Prospect theory. Prospect theory. Mm. Now, they're opening up a new direction, mm. which is a realistic direction. Yeah. And uh, it's clearly, economics doesn't have much to say about conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. It really doesn't. That's all the game theory stuff that comes out says we are all maximizing or we're all optimizing, yeah. and we aren't. I'm not an optimizer. Mm. I mean, I'm optimistic, but I'm not an optimizer. Yeah. I look at my investments and I look at my bonds and stocks and so on. I'm not maximizing. Mm -hmm. I'm just sort of going along, right? Yeah. Or something that has worked out well, but it's but that's the way, you know. It happens in, in conflict resolution when you have U, U.S. and uh, and uh, say North uh, Korea trying to work out something. You know, uh, there mm. are people like uh, Rice, like me. You know, mm. we don't we don't have any real facts behind us. We don't have any real scientific analysis. But if you get too much scientific analysis, it isn't going to work mm -hmm. because the people who are involved in in conflicts don't think like uh, don't think like truly rational people. Mm -hmm. They they're much more following the lines of prospect theory that Tversky yeah. has been mm -hmm. developing, and so uh, ah okay. So they, they, you know there has not been much successful mediation. Mm. The only the only times where I see successful mediation has worked is when. It, now is this getting too technical no, for you? I know no. no. I, I'll take I'll take the case of Europe mm. and the European Union. How in the world did it come about? Mm. How did it come? You know, when we were uh, in World War One, World War Two. There was tremendous hatred between the French and the Germans, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. How did that come and disappear? Mm. Well, I think it goes back to what I would say, and it was politics involved, that I'm not t I'm giving you some of my theory. Maybe you don't want it, but... We want your theories. All right. This is your interview. At the end of the uh, Second World War, there was U.S. with its political aims, objectives, right? Mm. There was the Soviet Union with its political ones. And the problem and the thinking that went into the U.S. group was they didn't want to see the Russians take over too much of mm. Europe. And the Russians were right there at the, uh, in Germany and mm. able to grab off a lot. So. I look upon the Marshall Plan as one way that we in the United States was able to develop, uh, to fight against the, uh, the Russian intrusion. Mm -hmm. And so it happened to be that uh, France's steel industry was in bad shape, but Germany had all the necessary coke, mm -hmm. access yeah. to Swedish ore, and was in excellent shape. U.S. policy was to build up Western Germany mm. to block off the incursions by Russia. And to do that, they had to have the Fr French involved in some way. And the, sto the, the coal and steel community was set up on small basis. Mm. The French were pushed hard and finally agreed so it started. Mm. And that's a small unit, but then it worked very well. So when the uh, problem of 
nuclear research came up for the European nations. They could not match the resources that U.S. could have put together. Mm -hmm. But if they worked together, the European nations, Britain, France, and Germany, they could amass the resources to be equal to what the U.S. was doing. And they were equal in contributions. Mm -hmm. But once those two things got operating well, others came along. Mm -hmm. And of course, you saw how the banking system has become unified yeah. and the Zero has yeah. become unified. And Mm. And there's the European Union. Mm. Well, uh, did your regional science throw a lot of uh, and, light on uh, that? And our, and our peace science, because yeah. what, what one way of getting rid of conflict is to start off with some small cooperative projects mm. that can to be successful and that gradually get involved more. And this is what, what happens, what has happened in the Korean Peninsula. Mm. We put forth a little project <laughs> which had, had uh, you know how the uh, North Korean political system is, con completely controlled and monitored and so on, mm. which could have that. And then <clears throat> we also had the problems of uh, getting something started and there there, there, we suggested a small economic project in the uh, mm. in the zone. What's that zone? The militarized zone. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the DMZ. And yeah. got to get started. Mm. And actually, that was t was done, mm. right? So when you say we, who is? Well, we didn't. We've done some research here mm -hmm. at Cornell. Okay. And uh, we came up with that idea. Mm. I. Uh, it involved a lot of uh, South Koreans and mm. some people re representing mm. China and so on, and we came up with this little idea. Mm. And then along, come, uh, along came the Hyundai Corporation president, right, mm. who was born in North Korea, yeah. interested in seeing North Korea and South Korea mm. work, working together, and he was the one who financed the operation. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, all the money that was earned by it or spent on it, went to the politicians in Pyongyang. Ah. <laughs> and they controlled every, every employee. Mm. They had to pass everything. Every visitor had to pass, yeah. pass through. Yeah. And that was something that uh, you and the people at Cornell were involved in yeah. developing. developing. That's a wonderful example of the way the field has had an impact on the real world, which is always what it's been trying to do. Yeah. But was that, I mean, looking back on your, on your time in the field, was that unique? Have you had several experiences like that, of actually having some of your ideas well, taken I, up? Well, of course, no. The, the, I, I, I came upon this through that coal steel community that, mm -hmm. that was started. I could see that there. And uh, no, I'm, we're, we're, that's exactly what we're trying to do with respect to the Palestinian-Israeli situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've set down, uh, been done research on how you get jobs mm -hmm. in the Gaza Strip and yeah. sort of having Gaza Strip start off as a, as a place which yeah expands, expands, and so on. Mm. That's the way I look at it. Yeah. Now, but you need to know math. You need to know economics. Mm. You need to be, be realistic, Tversky stuff. Yeah. You need to, uh, to bring in a lot of uh, objective, relative, uh, Im relative importance, thinking of the different objectives that uh, each nation or each mm. group has and work them together. Mm. Small things growing up. And that's yeah. what we're doing. Yeah. Mm. Well, it, it seems to me that that's uh, something that a lot of people back in the 50s and 60s were, were very keen on, that keen, you know, yeah. thinking and ideas should yeah. have an impact yeah. on policy. There must have been lots of hopes and dreams and optimisms in the early days of the field was developing. Um, do you think we've fallen short in, in any of those? What have we achieved? What have been some of the major achievements that we've, we've, we've managed to get? Yeah, I was disappointed that uh, the conferences really didn't turn out to have good, solid re res results on 
own managing councils. Mm -hmm. I mean, <coughs> we had very important contributions by David Singer and his Cal project, and now in the MIDS project, mm -hmm. very important. But then there was nothing on how do you have effective mediation. Mm -hmm. and, and there is not much in the past about that. That's mm -hmm. where I think we have fallen short, and if there's not been any effective mediation, look, we've had that, we have that, uh, that Northern Ireland pride conflict for so many years, mm. and so much work's been done on it, and so much as uh, Britain has contributed and everything else, but, you know, just recently it sort of died out. Mm. I, I want to know why, and no one has given a real good reason except say, well, time. Mm passage of time yeah. irons out these things. Mm. So, in that respect, but remember, it's this difficult thing. You're talking about all kinds of social science factors, mm. and they have to all interact with and come up with something that's yeah. realistic, realistic, yeah. not just talk, not just this game theory yeah. talk. Mm. Uh, do you think we've got a social science? Do you think, do you think it, peace studies or what? Whatever we're going to we're call moving it. so slowly. Uh, mm. What we're doing, you know, what I'm trying to do is add a little bit here yeah. and there. Mm -hmm. and hope my students can come along and add a little bit here and there. Yeah. That's the way it's worked in regional science. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's worked in economics. But you know, what I'm saying, economics now has gone off in a wrong direction. Mm. Primarily uh, optimization, and not how do you, how do you really confront situations. Mm. Mm -hmm. So um, you're optimistic about it uh, becoming a social science. What would be, uh, I think the favorite word these days are benchmarks. What would tell you that we've arrived as a, as a social science or as a peace science? What If we had a lot of successful results. <laughs> okay, that's a pragmatic yeah. answer, isn't it? Pragmatic answer. Yeah. I mean, there, there isn't too much. Again, I go back, let's go back to grit, that grit. That was a fine statement, a really, I was enthusiastic, mm -hmm. stimulated tremendously by it. Well, I, I, as I look back, I, 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 I have made some mistakes, you know. <laughs> and one serious mistake I made is when I had a fight with our dean at the University of Pennsylvania, mm. and uh, it was over the question of whether we could have a Department of Peace Science or not, and it had been said that we would have, mm. but the new dean that came in said he would not tolerate that. And so as a result, I left Penn and went to Cornell. Mm. And so we never developed a, fi a fine peace science PhD program, which would have rivaled or been just as good as what the regional science department had been. Mm. So that was a mistake I made, and I, I think it was a mistake, but maybe it wasn't, mm. because I'm still here doing basic research. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, interesting, because uh, you're, you, when you were talking about your dean, you used the word, he wouldn't tolerate it. And several other people have said to us that they thought that they were, uh, they were tolerated to do their work in peace research and in conflict resolution, but it never became an accepted thing in... Never supported adequately. Right. Right. Yeah, and that yeah. was your experience as that well. That was my experience, yeah. Uh, ah, well, it's... Um, it's why? Yeah, I mean, but but see, as a result, then I turn to have having conferences, and I think that's just as effective. Okay. Because we can now say that there's, I guess, two hundred or more members of the Peace Science Society here in U.S. It's mm -hmm. a very good group, mm -hmm. equal to any other young group, right. two hundred, and we're getting a very active one in mm. in uh, Europe, 
Uppsala group is developing, the Prio group is developing, mm -hmm. the Gersenberg group is starting to develop, all with fine young scholars. Mm -hmm. So that, that's where my optimism stands. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Uh, I'm still slightly puzzled, though, as to why it was so difficult to get a peace science department school going. Um, it, it sort of puzzles me. Do you think it was um, disciplinary rivalry, lack of resources? What was the? Um, why was it so all difficult? That's been discipline rivalry. You couldn't get support from a strong economics department. Mm. Maybe uh, it was rivalry. And mm. uh, you know where the universities are run now. Uh, mm. They went uh, Cornell. It has to be tops in every field. Yeah. Well, it can't have too many fields because it doesn't aren't, aren't enough resources to be tops in every field. Yeah. Yeah. So that's one of the problems. Yeah. So but you can't develop a small field and let it to get grow to moderate size without in the process of being cut cut out. Mm. Yeah. But uh, on the other hand, regional science was so successful. How how come now the one remember, took off from the yeah, other? Yeah, but when I re resigned from from Penn, also that department disappeared. Ah. Yeah. Now of course it was well enough advanced that regional sciences all around the world. Mm. Was, as I say, ten thousand or fifteen thousand regional scientists. We have that many peace scientists around the world, scattered around in all nations. Mm. That would be something. Yeah. 